so am. How did you end up here? <clears throat> Thank you for having me, and it's an honor to be speaking with all of you because um, this was this co-creative process with all of you um, beautifully and radically changed my creative practice for the better. Um, I, I'll start by saying that uh, Dirk Molman um, was a very dear uh, friend and colleague, and um, he approached me um, when he started Hamburg Machina, and he uh, asked me um, to send him everything that there was on my work, which was a WeTransfer file of I don't even know how many gigabytes. <laughs> um, he took three months, and he got back to me, and he said, one sentence, I'm dreaming of your digital temple. And I had not consciously intended to move into the digital realm, um, but I trusted Dirk. And um, so we started to develop this project. Strangely and interestingly, Dirk's first thought was that my um, performance and exhibition should be on, at a gallery just outside of the city near the forest. And um, I struggled with it because I, the forest is a beautiful, um, a very important sacred place for me. But I said to him, you know, my ministry is in the city. It's in the urban spaces and it's where the outcasts and um, um, I, I, the mutants and the... the the even atheists, um, it's, it's, it's basically where I can maybe do the most work. And he said, well, what about the oldest church in Hamburg? <laughs> <laughs> um, there's this amazing pastor <laughs> who's uh, really into art. And, you know, one thing led to another. <clears throat> and then um, I, I, I guess in common tongue, I could say by by what would you say, by, by work of God or, um, <laughs> or by uh, the universe intervened, I missed a flight that I was, I was in Germany working on another project. I was supposed to fly back to Rome. I missed this flight, um, which never happens. And I just rerouted myself to Hamburg and Dirk said, oh, you should contact Frank if you're going to be here like this. You guys can talk. I met Frank, and he said, oh, well, the, the Loom Werkstatt people are, are here today. Um, they're having a meeting. Why don't we just go, and you can you know, tell them about what you're doing, and we can see if that might, you know, if, if, if we might want to collaborate. And then the three of us and a few other people sat down for a meeting, and I, I think I, we just, I think I said something about, you know, I want, I'm creating this temple, and Marcelo's face lit up and said, you know, we're also working on the concept of a temple, and I, within an hour, we, we were planning to build light boxes and do this massive project together, and literally, it just, it, it just flew. I mean, it just, it, it, I, I feel very much that, that we all followed it, Mm. as though it was a thing that chose us more so than any one of us. But maybe Dirk was the very wise, um, again, I can say curator, but in a larger sense, um, a wizard who just created the space and allowed it to uh, organically grow in and of itself. And Frank, what was your first impressions when you met Michael and he was entering your church? Yeah, it was interesting because it, it started actually with Dirk because he was calling me and he, he, he was calling me and he was saying, you know, I have this project. And in the beginning, um, I also just trusted him. Okay, I also trusted him because he knew was, he was from this institution and, you know, he was in the city. And he, he told me that you were first out in the forest and he said we were the one to go into the city. And I think this is very um, interesting. Uh, Michael, what do, what do you say about the outcasts? Because when you enter the Santa Catarina church, it's a sentence written uh, on top, and it says, um, we don't have a city place here. So we are looking for the new city. Mm. And when you read in the context of this, it's about, it's, it's about Jesus and what happens to him, and it also says, he was brought to the outcasts, you know. Mm. And I think that this is very interesting that 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 religion is not only where the beauty is, and, but that it's also where the terrible things are and where, where the outcasts are, and they shall be, shall be risen up. So but this just was what you were saying. So I was in the beginning, I just heard about Dirk, what he was saying, and then he, uh, we met. 
and I found this very interesting. And in the beginning, I was, I was kind of gliding into this project. I was saying yes to this project without exactly knowing what would happen. Um, and it was until the very end, um, I had to explain to my church council and to the people. And even after this project, I got a call from, from one of my church who was dealing with uh, sects. And he said, what did you do there? And can I come along? I, I didn't have time to meet him, you know. But it was, it was, it was always a little bit shaky because we, I think we were stepping on insecure grounds. But um, uh, I made a good experience in this, in this project that I just said, we opened the doors and, um, and, uh, and we like the people and so we can do it. One last thing I would like to say, um, I was very happy that, that the connection came about with the Werkstatt in Gröninger Hof because it was an idea I was uh, giving to Dirk. We were walking around here and I said, don't we want to go over and take a look? And I was very happy that he was open for, no, first we only wanted to do it in the church, but that we connected and that we do the procession. He was very open to this idea um, and I was very happy that both he and you and also our people from the Genossenschaft were open for building this connection. Mm. And as Michael said, we were asked by him to create one piece for his bigger artwork, the digital temple, the temple of artifice. And he wanted to have an analog representation that we can take out of the church and bring it here. So the task from the beginning was to create mobile light boxes. And um, I was getting this, we were having this conversation when I was in Spain with my father and um, we were going in caves and it was a very weird situation. I, always when I woke up, I, w I went climbing down in caves and was looking at 12,000 year old painting. And then we had, in the evening, I had email contact with Michael and talking about how could we do this. And I just found out it would be too much to now make a really big design thing out of it. And I just decided to make it kind of working and easy and budget. And in the end, it happens to be that it was a really good decision because this building process was very different than the other ones that we had. Because instead of having far too little time for like a far too big task, <laughs> it was like the most relaxing three weeks we had. Um, because we did like a job I think we could have done in two days or three days. We did it in three weeks. And this less struggle gave us way more time to communicate and yeah, to build this kind of relation and also the next projects that came and also will come. So I'm just going to ask like this small question to, to M, like um, your usual daily practice doesn't really involve that much handiwork. How was it for you to screw and drill? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, uh, I really love tactile work. I love sculpture. I love making things, but I'm not the most coordinated. Uh, <laughs> and um, the thing that was, I think, the most interesting was coming into the Werkstatt and working um, with all of Loom. And, and when I say all of Loom, I include also the, the many... The, the many people that stopped by to help and to talk and to explore ideas. And I, I was very hesitant to even put my hands on the light boxes, partially because uh, I'm clumsy and, uh, you know, we, we had so much materials and we had to be careful, but I was, for the first time, really gently welcomed into this sort of making process. And that... Um, also changed my practice. Uh, I, I'm not yet at the point, but I think I'm almost at the point where I'm going to try and make my own light box. Um, and I think the sort of metaphor of, of a group of people um, working together on an art project that uh, basically uh, uh, all of the people that, that I had met and that we were working on didn't know my work, they didn't know necessarily what they were doing, but they invested their energy into it. And I, I, I have a kind of a spiritual philosophy which maybe comes from being a performance artist because when, when, when you perform, um, you, it's an energy exchange between you and the audience. And I'd, I'd, I'd always been a little bit sort of strange about objects because I felt, you know, maybe they don't carry the same resonance. Um, but, but one of the things I really felt in this process is that the objects contained the energy 
that they were made with. And, and you know, they're, they're here. These objects have moved around with us. They've gone into several locations. They've, I mean, there was a, I, I was here for a party where they were, <laughs> they were featured. I, I actually ended up putting a beer on one of them, which was a funny choice, you know, to kind of uh, the, the sort of sacrality of an art object. Um, but it's like, uh, it's, it's like they're beings. And I think they're beings because lots of people put their energy into them. And I, I, I feel at least, and a lot of the feedback I've received from, from them is that they, they, they contain that energy. So it was a, it was a beautiful learning point for me um, uh, to sort of, yeah, to, to go past the metaphor of making as a kind of a theoretical or spiritual practice into a, a physical practice. And um, I was so... Um, honored to be so gently supported. I mean, at first, I, I think I was just drilling. That was my only job, drilling. <laughs> and then very slowly, you know, uh, you or someone else would say, well, why don't you try this or a little bit like this? And, and it was so gentle that I felt like I could. And yeah, and now um, my hands have changed in my practice. Very beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> The gentle drilling. Um, <laughs> and Frank, um, I also want to ask you one question to this part of the time before the performance, uh, because I'm, I'm, I mean, you kind of dropped it a little bit, what was happening before, but I'm, I was really interested because we never talked about how was really this time before the performance, the, how many questions did you need to answer and... Um, I, had to, I said before, I had, I had to answer some of the questions, but I was really... Um, um, I, I thought the thing which carried me through, which also gave me trust, was that I said, we work with arts. And I think this was also very important during the whole performance, that I said, you know, I'm... And in a way, being a pastor is also dealing with arts. We have arts in the, in the church. It's also, you are also a performer when you do a service. And we have pictures and we have texts, so it's, it's, it's arts. But I... I thought it's it's really interesting. It's, it's a piece of art, and that means it's it's not only one to one meaning. You know, it, you say things, but it's arts. And I told you about this one pastor was calling me. What did you do there? And I think he, for me, he made the mistakes. He forgot that we were dealing with art, mm. and that that was something which was really interesting for me, um, because it gives the whole thing power. But also, it's it's about it's not this is said and this is a meaning, it's much broader. It has to do with the communication, what happens. And we will talk about this later during the performance because I want to also to mention this here, um, that our performance later on and the power of arts or what's happened, was really challenged by the fact that um, Dirk Möllmann was dying and he di died just in, in the night before the performance was. And suddenly the whole performance got a really very different power and uh, sincerity. Mm -hmm. um, no, I want to say more. So I w I want your question was, what did I have? I was asking some questions. I got some information. But I was ra rather saying, let's go for it. And I was very uh, honored that uh, Dirk wanted to have this in his Hamburg machine to have the church within it in this project. Yeah. And one thing I want to mention, one more thing. For me, it was very interesting, uh, also, um, and also producing trust in me, that by tradition you're coming from a Jewish background, yeah. Michael. I found this very touching and very interesting, and that also you have um, that you also were in contact with this theologian from New York, Berger. Uh, what is her name again? Uh, Brigitte Call. Yeah, I read her book, and mm. it's a great book. And so, I, by asking my question, I started to read books, and I was, I was, I was thinking a lot. And uh, I thank you very much, Michael, because I read this great book because mm. I was thinking what we're doing there, mm. you know, in the summertime. Yeah. Can I just uh, continue something there? Um, because uh, w one of the things, again, uh, Dirk passed um, the night before the performance. Um, and what ended up sort of happening around that, uh, I mean, it, Isabella communicated to us that Dirk would have wanted the performance to go on, and we all made that decision together. And when when that happened, um, like you like you said, it sort of um, the, sin the the sincerity, the sort of deeper process, sort of came through. And for me, um, 
uh, there's a, I hope I can get the quote right, I think it's by the artist Bruce Nauman, um, uh, art is the difference Art is the difference between life and death. That may seem dramatic, but it is also true. And um, for me, the, I mean, art and life blend endlessly, and my work blends religion and art. And that moment for all of us is where art, life, and religion quite literally blended together in a, in a way that, I, I, again, I think surpassed art. I mean, yeah. art, as an artist, I, I, you know, I make something, I present something um, with the purpose to start a conversation or to initiate a dialogue. But here, it, this, this, this immensity that happened crossed all barriers. And I think that that, um, Brigitte Call, the theologian that, that you brought up, she is, uh, does visual exegesis. You know, she, she looks at images and she looks at art uh, from a theological lens and um, reads, it in, um, uh, reads it in the same way that we would read or look into scriptural texts. Um, and I think in that spirit, we were, um, I mean, I, I, I somehow saw all of that coming together in a way that I had never experienced. And, you know, we, the performers, were painted in neon um, and wearing, you know, outfits that, that, that correspond to my practice. But here we were in a very reverent, very ceremonial, legitimately mm. ceremonial process that, um, you know, for, for, for a couple moments I felt, is this appropriate? Mm. But um, one of the things that Isabella said about, about Dirk, and I think it was beautiful, is that he was not religious, but he was religious about art. Mm. And so, in fact, being art, in a sense, as, as at least the performers were, um, it, it, it did feel ceremonial in a level that I had never experienced. And um, I think that that, again, going back to that Bruce Nauman quote, that, that blending of life and art, um, <clears throat> that's what Dirk dedicated his practice to. And so um, I felt very honored, um, uh, uh, in a sense, to be holding that space collaboratively with everyone um, uh, to honor him in art, <laughs> mm. uh, as art, as life. So we started to talk a bit about the performance and I just wanted to also just collect a little bit of the perception of that night before we then turn on to kind of reenact what we already talked about, yeah. but I think we will talk it very tell it very differently. So maybe Frank just starts and tells us like how how did you think this evening went on? Like Yeah, it went as it was um it started certainly with a with a um, with a very sad news that Dirk died, and I was very and it was it was amazing. We were in the day here, and Isabella, his wife, came along and she she, uh, she told it to us, and we were sitting here and we were eating together, and um, we couldn't get it. It was so, so deep and it was actually for me it was this was also a very spiritual moment. It was for me like a last supper. We were sitting here and eating together from one you know. Uh, so this was, uh, there it already started for me that the performance started in a way. It was kind of the beginning and then we started with the performance itself in the evening. I was very nervous. Do, do we get enough people come in? And actually, I think there were there were I think it could have been more, but there were uh, there were quite good people coming, and I think it was because it was also goodbye to Dirk. Even some even more people came because they knew it was his idea to do it in this in this way. And we started also with a little commemoration, and um, and um, and then you started the performance, and maybe we, we can continue that you how you experienced this beginning at this point. Sure, sure yeah, I mean, it w uh, and maybe it's important to note, I think we raised it already, but it was very important to Dirk that um, the light boxes be carried through the streets. And um, it, we, had, we had talked about this procession. So the light boxes were presented on the stage, myself and the two other performers, Cordula Daus and Annette Elster. Um, we delivered, uh, 
Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm hesitant to say it was a sermon, but we, we did a kind of a hybrid where we explained or presented aspects of the mythology and, and sort of illuminated the themes that were presented on the light boxes. Um, and, then, and then we did a, a, a ritual around the church for Dirk, and then we carried the light boxes uh, around the outside of the church, and um, Frank uh, lit the church up from the inside so that we could see there was a beautiful relationship between mm -hmm. um, the, 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 the stained glass windows of the church being illuminated from the inside in dialogue with, with, uh, with these. And it was quite interesting, as you mentioned, um, that I was raised Jewish, and my, I had an aunt and my cousin were here, and my cousin Alan um, carried, uh, was one of the people carrying the light boxes, and he made a comment, he said, oh, it feels like carrying the Torah. Yeah, yeah and in, but in, this is how it looked. Yeah, and, and the thing is, in, in, when you're, when you're uh, it's, a, it's a mitzvah, it's mm -hmm. an honor to be uh, called to the bima in the synagogue to, to carry the Torah, uh, and you, you quite literally walk around the synagogue, and, you know, people touch it and bless it, and, and that comment really resonated for me because on one hand he I think was understanding he's carrying an art object every everyone who was carrying them had the pressure of not you know not falling not breaking it not but also understanding that it had a much larger significance and that sort of relationship when he said it's like carrying the Torah was very palpable for me because I had had that experience at my bar mitzvah and various points you know being young and it's really heavy and you're you're carrying this object so laden with meaning um, and you're you're invited into this ritual sense. So that and again, that was Dirk was so <laughs> intense about us being able to carry these through 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 public space and. It, it wasn't so easy to make them battery powered. Light boxes no. are <laughs> light boxes are um, you know traditionally plugged into a wall, and you know we put a lot of energy and work into that moment. And 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 I mean that moment retrospectively it was maybe 15 minutes, but um, that was probably the most important part for me. Um, obviously, you know performing in the church, the whole ceremony, the the. Um, the opportunity to present this work in that site-specific location was very exciting and interesting for the for the process. But actually, that uh, process and procession there they come from the same word. Um, th that procession, I think, for me, uh, is where time bent. I mean, again, like I say, probably in real time, it might have been ten or fifteen minutes, but it felt like yeah. felt like something beyond. I want to say one more thing about the performance because you said it, it was like a sermon, but it was it was a for me it was a very interesting mixture because it, also, it reminded me to my lectures from university. It was like a lecture about church history or religion history because you were very exactly who's there and, and then you were telling about how things were, 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 were brought about and people were scientists and they were finding things in the planet. So it was also a very scientific mm. way, approach like, like in my, when, when, you, when you learn theology they say about the text when it was found and, when, and there's an author there and an author there and then you can have the different traditions. So it, was a, it was also a lecture but you were performing as um, priests because you will, you know, you look, you didn't look like a boring professor in the lecture. <laughs> you had your your stuff on you, you know. Yeah. yeah. So th I think this was for me a very interesting. And then it was something which was I was also because then it was very hard for me. What is this here? Is this a lecture? And then it was look, listen exactly to the words. And I said, yes, but my own thing is different, you know, and what I think and what I believe. And then I said, but it's not, it's, it's, it's art. And, you know, it was very, it was different forms overlapping on each other. Yeah. And one point then we got up and we were walking and, and we were passing by this one place where the candles were. We were lighting candles for Dirk. Mm -hmm. I think that was very interesting because suddenly the tradition which this church is used to mm -hmm. came up. And what was nice when we were outside, and I love your sentence with the carrying the Torah, is that in a way the windows of St. Catherine suddenly also became light, light boxes. Mm. They looked the same, just mm. bigger, you know? Mm. And they suddenly started to talk, you know? Because when you're inside the church in the night, all the windows, which are very beautiful, they have, they have also similar colors, mm. but they're dark. Mm. And when we came out in the public space, mm. suddenly 
and they have this similar form, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I found this very interesting. Then suddenly my, my, <laughs> it's not mine, but, but the, the, the windows of my church yeah. started to talk and they were happy that they, ah, they, oh, there are other windows, you know? Mm. And there was a conversation between these, mm. um, uh, these uh, windows. And just as I'm sitting here, um, the one window is about baptism and the one other one is Mary holding baby Jesus. And then again, I have to think of Isabella, who was there with uh, their baby. And this was very touching for me, you know, that suddenly my own pictures, it's not my own, but the pictures of my, my, mm. my church mm -hmm. started to talk in a different way. Mm. And then we went over to the um, Werkstatt and had a very nice talk over here, which was also very, I think it was an important part of the performance. Change of rooms, change of atmospheres, still having the objects which were over there, having them here. Yeah, um, now I think we want to pass to this concept you say about how to temple, to the main like, kind of discussion of the, of the, of the day. And how do, you, how do you use this, uh, this temple as a verb? Because for us it's really interesting that, uh, that it doesn't have this spatial connotation, but it has like this ongoing, yeah, as a verb. So can you explain a little bit how, how, how do you see this? Sure. I, I mean, I think it, it, the, I, I can't remember precisely when that came up, but it came up some point in the process where um, I, I, somehow we said to temple. I, I think it came up in the conversation that night, but it might have come up beforehand. I, I think we, were, we went out a day before or two days before yeah. and th th then is when you said it. That's okay because it was, it's very, this, the whole process is odd because it was like a kind of a cauldron of things gestating and growing at the same time. So, um, I mean, I, I'll, I, I read a really beautiful book on the Kabbalah which is called God is a Verb um, uh, by, mm. uh, and it's, it's one of, and the idea God is a verb is that it's a process and, and one of the things I was really drawn to in the book is that they said, you know, even the way that we conceive of ourselves, Frank, Michael, Marcelo, we shouldn't actually think of that in that way. We're not a noun, we're a verb, we're an active yeah. process. So I should be Michael Ng and you should be <laughs> Frank Ng and Marcelo Ng because you are always in this, in this spiral circle of process, and I think that as what, what we were doing this entire time, quite literally, we were building a temple. That temple exists on the internet, and anyone with internet access can experience it, visit it. Um, it, it we built aspects of it so that uh, clearly they can be experienced outside of the performance and the work. Um, uh, like you said, the, the day that uh, we were all together um, became a temple because of what we were doing. Um, and what we're still doing, look what we're still doing. <laughs> it's months later and we're still in this process. And I think that, I mean, I'm very honored that my art was the excuse or the, um, um, or the, or the center point to, to, um, to create that process. But the, the I, can't, I think maybe the larger process of temple ing is the is maybe in an anarchist sense. It's that you can create sacred space anywhere. Mm. Um, traditionally, we uh, communities would quite literally build a space, and and that space uh, was I, I think even um, well, the translation of the word holy in Hebrew kadosh mm. uh, literally translates to set apart. So to make something holy is to set it apart from everything else. So, you know, in a sense, a studio, an artist's studio, is a room. You know, like, my studio is a room in our house. That room before was used as a bedroom. But because I said it's a studio, it's a space, it's a different space, and it carries that, that meaning. But I think to temple is to recognize that we, as spiritual beings, have the have the authority, uh, self, maybe we, we have this sort of, uh, yeah, we have the authority to produce and construct those spaces anywhere uh, in space and time. And I think politically and, and socially and a lot of the work that Loom is doing and talking about and a lot of the work that y you all are involved in in, in Hamburg is, is um, 
is engaged with that process in civic space and 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 in maybe even in economic spaces mm -hmm. and um, so I I think that it I I the the verb <laughs> The, the idea of temple as a verb is a kind of, for me, it's a kind of, uh, it's, it's, it's a virus. Mm. It's a virus, uh, much like, and the reason I chose to call the project religion virus is that it, it's, it spreads. When people come into count, encounter it, they um, carry it with them and then they can apply it in their own lives. I think this is very beautiful because um, now I understand the would virus okay we live in the time of coronavirus so everyone is yes. frightened you know but 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 I, I now I, I feel a very positive connotation because it's the spreading the spreading without invisible spreading you know and um, I always tell the people a church for example or any temple is a public space with a spiritual connotation when you are um, and and I think it, it, it brings forward the spiritual part of yourself that within you is a secret or a miracle or something beautiful or something frightening, something which we cannot grab, which still is there. In the literature, you would say the things which are between the lines, you know? When you want to understand the book, don't read the words, read between the lines. Mm -hmm. That's for me spiritual. And the temple is the place where this is not only in the background, become, but becomes, comes to the front. It's always there. You know, we see a baby, we are touched, it's spiritual, but it comes to the front. Um, and um, in, the, in the biblical tradition, there are some parts which is a longing for rebuilding the temple. And there are other parts which are very critical about the temple because the temple can also be something, can also be a prison. We build it and now it's here and we, we put God in there and then, then he's there. And there are prophets and others saying, you know, we don't need the temple. So to temple is very nice. It's not only the building. And um, in churches, very terrible things have happened. So it's really true. It, 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 it's, not, it's not the building itself. I tell the people, St. Catherine is not built by stones. It's built by words, by stories. And the stories became stones. And when I came here into the Werkstatt today, now as I'm sitting here, I thought, it's like a temple. It's a beautiful light. And the boxes are here. And, you know, I know this Werkstatt as Autowerkstatt, uh, um, um, a, a car repair station. And it's so beautiful what happened to this place, you know? Because now I, uh, we have all the creative thinking and, it's, and, and the hospitality. But even I can tell, because I know the people who run this, this garage before, and it's very nice, with very nice people. I can see how, I can feel how they were here and they have their thoughts and they had to earn their money. You know, I can feel all the stories which they brought with they, they were maybe, they were in love and they were departing. It's all in, the, in, this, in this walls. Mm. So by coming together and, and you cannot all, always have spirituality in front, you know, you also have to eat and to fun and to laugh. But, but sometimes it's very beautiful explicitly to take spirituality in the front and I think what happens here in this Werkstatt is that uh, when we temple in this, in this Werkstatt, we, um, we open up for those things which are always are a part of us, but which are of, often forgotten. Yeah, okay. I, I really like what you said about the vir virus, and I think uh, what you say about the verb is something that we as a collective are, uh, are now uh, took really much into consideration. I will read something really quickly about what, we, what a temple is officially. Uh, a temple is a building, a space that is devoted to the practice of rituals. People congregate, congregate, gather to communicate and exchange, this is pray, where the practice of, of it involves to give something of value back to the ecosystem of, uh, uh, to the ecosystem one believes in. So I think this is really interesting when you say that it's, it's, this is a virus and this is a verb because this is something we as a collective like, like really, really uh, fit us really well because we, we consider ourselves now like a nomadic temple. We, we go to places, we kind of establish ourselves there, and then we enable ourselves with like these creative forces and we communicate between each other and we also kind of like try to communicate, I don't know, to greater forces if, if you believe in something else. And 
really like this virus happens because suddenly you are you are seeing a person that is doing something mm -hmm. and you feel this motivation to also construct to also build to also say something and it's wonderful how how things can happen and really persons enter into a kind of like new state of mind and this is where the, the verb really takes is uh, really takes the like this connotation and then w and when it exists like in the minds of the persons who are doing it at, at that moment in that space and the sacrifice is also like how it's not easy to do anything mm -hmm. like you have to really work for stuff you know you have to you, you, it takes time it takes effort it takes resources so temple for us is now it's it really makes sense and it, it really it really works with us really well as a collective i think i think um, i want to go back to the word virus once you have started to get this virus you cannot stop to look at places in this way um, it, this, uh, this is what I want to say. If, if, if you, can, you can say there's nothing like spirituality, no matter what religion. But, you can, but once you're infected with this idea that there's more to places than you can see in the first place, you know, I never forget, we were uh, occupying the Willy Brandstrasse. We were standing in the front, middle of it, and a friend of mine said, oh, it's a square. And usually you only see a motorway. And, and now that means from now on, wherever I go to motorways, I see squares. It's a virus. You know, I cannot, and that's beautiful. When we get infected by this virus, we go, we, from now on, any Werkstatt you see, you will say, oh, it's even more than only repairing cars. It could be, you know, it's a virus which, which is infecting your heart, and that's beautiful. Um, yeah, and I just wanted to add one other point that, um, you know, one of the one of the important things I learned in art school, uh, maybe largely since conceptual art emerged, is that, you know, uh, it was sort of an expression that one of my professors said. You know, if um, if a construction worker digs a hole, it's a hole. Hmm. If an artist digs a hole, it's art. And you know that that can be you know that that can make people really uncomfortable because then they say, well, it's like the you know my child could paint that or you know why is it art? But but what the relationship between religion and spirituality that comes with that is that okay when you when you see someone else doing something and they say, oh no, this is art or this is my art. Oh, you, you see, Michael, and when and when suddenly a rabbi or a pastor is standing beside this hole, you maybe think it's a grave. Ah, yes, interesting. Yeah, that's and right. I just was saying, that's, that's right. That's right. That's actually a really interesting yeah. extension. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. You, you, uh, you, you project onto whatever the thing that yeah. is made, yeah. the, the person yeah. that's officiating the process. Yeah. But the, the viral aspect, and I think this is what Loom does, and this is what I was referring to in, in the process, even by calling it Loom. I mean, you, you, you guys build things but you imbue the process of building with a spirituality, creativity, and art. Therefore, anyone sees that, they then, I mean, uh, building a bookshelf in their house, which before was just maybe something they had to do to put their books on, after seeing that process, by recognizing, oh, okay, if I make it art, I change the energy of it. And that's that sort of it, that large scale infection, I think, is um, what society sorely needs. Uh, w w uh, our illnesses, our spiritual illnesses, come from a lack of meaning that uh, that surround our our lives and and processes where we don't feel in command of ourselves and our energies and. Above all, this is why I say my art is for the outcasts, and I am, I'm very glad, to, proud to be an outcast and a mutant. Um, those of us who uh, um, uh, need to, hunger to make meaning out of this mess, mm. that's, um, I think, creativity and art is sort of, uh, at least for our generation, it's something a little bit maybe more accessible than, than dominant or institutionalized religions, and this is also very interesting for you because you open up your doors for this, you open up your doors for people to experiment and experience mm -hmm. religion outside of their normative ideas. But I think the, the bigger picture is that we inspire, fundamentally. That's, if, if I have to simplify my purpose, it's, it's quite literally to just do what I do. I make this mythology because I need to and want to, it, the, the, putting it into the world, exhibitions, performances, those are symptoms of the virus. Mm. 
the actual, I think, the, and, and all of us, I think the real important work is doing what we do and, and by other people getting to see that process, empowering themselves to be able to make sacred everything in their own lives. Yeah, I mean, I also want to say something about this um, temple work because, um, I mean, we're a little bit farther, but I think it's also adding a lot to these things that you already said because the, the thing about the two temple is that you, which, which I like to try to translate also in urban kind of practice, is you cannot just build a temple and then it is a temple. You have, you need the act of mm. using it as such and such a thing. And I think there's like one of the big problems that we found out in the beginning and one of the first sketches we did, um, I will may later digitally now like blend it in because it's about like how a seed needs to be planted somewhere and then it grows to a, a certain point. And when we talk about temples, most people always have this Greek temple in their mind. Mm. And we know that they come from a wooden structure and we don't know what was before that. So those people, they just went there and they didn't say, like, hey, let's get these massive stones here. Mm -hmm. No, they started to act. And at one point they found out that it's more convenient if they have a roof over their top. Mm -hmm. And then they came with the roof. And I think also structures like Stonehenge possibly also came out of a, a kind of practice. So the temple itself is a manifestation of a practice, of an act. Mm -hmm. And to think that you can start with the manifestation is a, is a big problem that we have in urban space. People think they can build a house in concrete which could last hundreds of years, just pop it out of the ground and then it works. But that's not how things evolve and grow. Things need, need, need to be planted need to be worked on and as you said like if I want a temple to be a temple I cannot just build it and just leave it there mm -hmm. I need to go there every day or how whatever the rhythm will be to keep it alive mm -hmm. and this is this is the nature of human beings that we think that things could be somehow infinite but they are not we have to maintain them everything yeah. then and this kind of acting in my mind it was a very big thing that that took out of it that if I want things to change, like the only thing you have to do, as you say, is just do what you what you are doing, and by that the things manifest mm -hmm. in a way. And I, yeah, it was crazy that you gave so much meaning and words to things that we already did, and it gave us a lot of power in that. Yeah. I think um, when you look at a city like the Hafen City, for example, you can see what happens when people just build houses and people move in and then they shall use them. I personally think that, that you can tell by this, it's, it's, it's amazing that there are people living that suddenly where there was nothing is a city, but you can see that it lacks life because it's only built and then, people, then it's left. This, this is a problem. I think this is a problem of city building that we that we don't connect it with that that we just put them there and then we say you can do something in there, and that the the living and the doing the verb life as a verb is mm -hmm. not not enough involved in the development of our cities. Mm -hmm. San Catarine was heavily destroyed in the Second World War, and um, when they want to rebuild it again after the war, the people said, ah, oh, we don't need it. No one is living here, you know. We want to build a big street here, and there's the free harbor. It's nothing. And really, the one who rebuilt it, they wanted to put a sign of peace, and they sold all their grounds to have money to, to rebuild it. And they put this word, we, we don't have a steady place. We're looking for the new city. And for me, it's so beautiful that, that this church was built by people who really had a vision what shall be with what shall happen in this city and they wanted to go into the communication mm -hmm. with the city. Mm -hmm. In our performance with you, Michael, mm -hmm. and with you, with the loom, was a very beautiful way of, I always say the San Catarina wants to play. Mm -hmm. It needs playmates. Mm -hmm. And it's mm -hmm. surrounded by dead buildings. Mm -hmm. And it's really sad. Do you want to play with me? Mm -hmm. Do you want to play with me? Mm. Do you want to play with me? Mm. And it was the first um, scene of playing together. Mm. Suddenly this, uh, for many people, ugly, the, the ugliest house from, from a cliche perspective mm. in the whole suddenly starts to play mm. with little Katarina mm. over there. Mm. 
and she became very happy about this and her windows were glooming mm. 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 and i and and for me the one who put the first stone again to rebuild Catherine, who said we want to have a new city here what happens here is this is kind of the prophet it, it's this is this is why this church was built mm. that places like this who are able mm. to go into communication to live the life as a verb and not mm. as a steady mm. subject or I think that that's, that's mm. uh, and uh, one last sentence because we were talking before, Marcelo, um, and also what you said, Michael. Um, I think um, it's, it's, it's a really a great challenge for, our, for me also as a pastor and this church that people come with an interest for public space with a spiritual idea and make it fluid again and that you use it. And we were talking the other night, Marcella, and you said, in a way, San Catherine could be a city hall, you know? Mm. And I think this is a very nice, I, I want to celebrate my services in there and everything. I think that's a part of it, and, mm. and it's touching. But if we, if we can open up this space for much more meanings and that people are less shy to walk in, yeah. also we have to be less shy in the church, but if we can really use this place as a, then maybe we have this, what we said, this, what is the title for this talk today, a common ground. No matter whether we come from a Christian tradition or from an atheist tradition or a Jewish, I, I don't know, we have a common ground that we, that we meet to temple. Mm -hmm. And then, then maybe in the next step, it's very interesting, then we can also in a nice way fight about what we think is true, blah, 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 blah. But I think this common ground idea, I think that's very beautiful, you know, that we, that, that's so the longing for meaning and to temple, it's bringing us together in this backstadt and it's brought us together over there. Another important question, why is it important to temple then? I mean, what does it bring us from a perspective, from a, um, the church? Artist, artistic and um, more like activist. Mm. Because what I can hear is that when you are templing, you are more conscious about what the things you're doing. You, you, you are not passive about whatever mm. you're doing. Mm. You're in the moment in a different kind of perspective. So I just want to hear a little bit about what do you think, why is it important that people temple? I think, I think it's important because to temple is to be aware of, of the, the core of the humanity because every, every person is a miracle and it's, it's beautiful and it has its honor and we have to be aware of it. We are not only machines. We are not only, you know, we have to be aware of that. We have a piece of art. St. Paul in the New Testament says, you are, every one of you is the temple of Christ. So he says, our bodies, from our eyes to the mouth, to the belly, to the asshole, it's, <laughs> part of the temple of Christ. So that's very, so it's, 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 for me, it's the core of humanity to be aware of that, to te that's to temple. And, um, and I think to temple in the sense of arts, religion, um, activism, as you said, that's, the, that's, one of the, that's one of the core questions for me as a Christian or as a Jew, as any re religious person. How do our religions are connect to the things we do. And I think really there has to be a connection. If we only do blah, blah, blah here, I think um, there, it's not a direct connection. Not everything you do spiritual is doing, but I think it, action and to temple has to be connected. Otherwise, it's, um, it's not true for me. Yeah, and then I think that um, uh, w one of the things that happens when you reclaim your sense of responsibility for the present, uh, for your reality, um, when you, I, I think that's maybe the importance for art is, is, the, is the sort of responsibility to show how we can construct our own realities. And there's a, a sort of a very common, I think, anthropological observation that in a lot of indigenous cultures, they don't have the word art because 
life is art. Mm -hmm. um, everything is art. And so everything, therefore, is imbued with intention and, um, and uh, a, a sort of a, an expression of an active mythology. And I think that the role that art is playing culturally now is helping to reclaim a kind of um, a, a personal, but also a larger collective mythology, um, taking it back from um, the powers that be, which I won't list, but that, that do take our agency away, um, or that prescribe to us mythologies that, that keep us ill. And um, I think that, I think more than anything that we, by reclaiming, um, by, by templing, uh, and by showing that every person has the power to construct their own realities and to construct their own concepts of sacredness, um, that is a germ that in a few generations, we may no longer need the word art anymore. Uh, so it might be a full cycle. May I add one, one more thing? Because I think it has a very, it's very important in our days because we live in a, we live in a time where we don't know what happens to our planet. Um, we have the Fridays for Future and all the things. We don't know what happens throughout. And, um, and um, the, the, the artificial religion you are presenting is, is looking at planets, mm. cosmological perspective. Mm. And when you fly to the moon and you look at the, at the Earth, planet Earth, that's, I think this, this view must be templing. Mm. It's so beautiful. And I think um, we have to temple much more that 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 this that this view, this being touched about our planet, becomes not only a weekend thing or a Sunday's thing or a Shabbat thing or mm. or but but that it becomes a part of our everyday life. And it's a question of survival on this planet. I think I think that's that was important for me. Therefore, and I'm very thankful to all of you. For the word to temple, I, I think that's beautiful. Yeah, I also think this could be maybe one of the answers um, to these questions that we raised in the beginning. Like how to temple, in my opinion, it's really easy because we are all, as you said, we we just can do it. It's it's us, and to meet, to talk, even if we have different points, like points of view, even if we come from very different like ideologies, we, I think we don't have to collect it, but uh, over the talk we found out like what are the things that we're looking for, we haven't talked about the differences, we have talked about what we have in common, and that is also like, I think the differences are also a big part of to temple, mm -hmm. and we always yeah. like to bring up this word of the market of ideas that in, it, is, it, it should be allowed always to put out whatever you think, and it should be always openly discussed, and it, it should be taken for what it is and not for how it hurts you or whatever. And um, this is giving the freedom for everyone to, to think, to really are allowed, that they are allowed to say and think what they want. And if they think something that we think that they should not think, mm -hmm. then we should get in a discussion with them yeah. and then find out why they think that and maybe abstract it to a certain point. And then we maybe come and at one level of abstraction to this common ground mm -hmm. that we've been talking about. Sometimes it works better, sometimes not. But I think we have covered really beautifully what um, this whole thing may uh, moved in us. And I hope that all the people who will be listening to us will somehow get a bit of this infection too. <laughs> um, I want to really say a big thank you for Frank that uh, made the appointment possible today and for Michael who is coming from, I don't know, you are traveling around a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Just happens to be that you flew over Hamburg and dropped here. Um, thanks Alberto and for the whole collective who made all of this possible because we are not, we are two persons sitting here but we are representing many more as you are maybe also doing with your work. And yeah, so thank, yeah. let's temple. Let's okay, temple. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs>